Uh -huh. He's back. You ever watch uh, Chris Brown video? It takes him like five minutes to walk to like right there and he just like... <laughs> What surprised me the most about Houston is its diversity. It's just as diverse as New York, but with that Southern hospitality. In the late 70s, Vietnamese refugees made their way over to Houston that they brought their religion, their culture, and their food to make Houston their home. I think this is the largest concentration of century-old eggs in America right there. White fungus urchin. I don't even... What? The gill is everything in there. It's like fresh still. This is like paradise for me. It just shows the concentration of, of Vietnamese here in, in Houston. And it's so awesome that they've brought Vietnam to Texas. Crawfish, blue crab. We're in the heart of Chinatown, about to eat some Vietnamese Cajun food. We're gonna go to Cajun Kitchen. These guys have seamlessly put those two delicious flavors together and we're gonna taste some today. It's still kicking, huh? Yeah, they just probably caught this at 3, 4 a.m. Our drivers go down to Louisiana and they, they pick them up and then they come back here and drop them off. So this happens every day. We wash it, boil it first. We let it soak in our Cajun oil for about 30 minutes to one hour, just to make sure that the, the seasoning really penetrates into the crawfish meat and the head. And that's when you can, how you can tell a good boil from a bad boil. Yeah. All right, show me the right way, okay. man. Okay, so you grab, grab one of these, take, hold the tail, pinch it like this, Twist the head off like oh, that. Look at that. Mmm, it takes the, the yeah. spice right off the bat. Yeah. Like the true Louisiana people, they take this and they just suck all the head fat out. Oh. I'm Filipino, so I know how to do it. Yeah. This, bro. Kind of lends itself because of the Cajun to have their French influence like in Vietnamese cuisine, it kind of just came together. Yeah, Vietnamese cuisine, you know, when the French came, they brought the baguette and the butter. And they kind of blended in with their own. I mean, that's what we do around the restaurant too when we come up with new dishes. And you know, we think, hey, what do we like to eat that's, you know, American, you know, for right. example. What do we like to eat that's, that's Mexican or that's Thai or whatever it is? And let's see if it works with a Vietnamese food. goes through the original boil, and then we do the, the Asian twist to it. A ton of butter, a ton of garlic. You know, we get the sugar and all that caramelized around the crawfish. Lime, there's orange, tamarind, sugar, green onion, cayenne pepper. That's the regular fat ass. So that's about six pounds of uh, six pounds of food. <laughs> Looks pretty fat to me. Help me dispatch this uh, crab here, this Dungeness crab. <laughs> oh, it's the you ones are lying. Bro. So what I would do is uh, <laughs> hold it down here. Take this. this part, take this one here. Put it here, and then we're gonna break this off. Got it. Easy, buddy. I thought you said it was docile. <laughs> you just take the lid off. Just yeah, like just that. take the lid off. Sorry, brother. So uh, growing up, you knew you was going to be a chef? Uh, I worked for a public accounting firm and I worked for some oil companies. But it, it wasn't the thing that I wanted to do the rest of my life. Uh, I was cooking in the army back in uh, Europe. And when this opportunity came up to get in the crawfish business, I was like, yeah, let's do it. We're going to flash fry it. I mean, it keeps the sweetness, the juiciness in the crab meat. And then we're going to stir fry it in our wok, in our tamarind sauce. took butter and scallions and fried onions and garlic, top it off on the Gulf oysters, and they would grill it over there. Look at this spread, man, I'm excited. <laughs> some of the food is spicy. If you don't want to experience some pain, I, I suggest we put on some gloves. <laughs> okay. So the first wave of Vietnamese came in in 1975. Yeah. What was that? With the fall of Saigon, the communists were moving into Saigon. 
and everyone would get out. They would go to other countries. Once the communists took over and uh, right after the fall, it got harder for the people to leave because if you got caught, then you end up in a prison camp. And the Vietnamese people were really appreciative, you know. Uh, we, they got a lot of help and, and I think that made them also more open to embracing the American culture and learning about, you know, American food. Also a huge influence of Vietnamese is the Katrina. Yeah. I heard 9,000 Vietnamese people move from New Orleans to Houston because of Katrina. My family, when they left Vietnam, came to Louisiana, fishermen too. So they would go catch some of the stuff, like same stuff that we're eating right now. They lived in Louisiana, they loved it there. With Katrina happening, they had to move here because the house got flooded. After Katrina, we also had the, you know, the recession that hit in 2008, 2009. And a lot of people from Orange County, California, Vietnamese people, moved to Houston because you know, jobs weren't plenty out over there, property values were too high. A lot of them had really good Vietnamese restaurants. So we've had these two waves of Vietnamese people from other cities coming in who come with ideas. And what I've seen in, in my short time here is that the community embraces that. A couple of years maybe there'll be an influx of other people from somewhere else that's going to change this, all this stuff that we do here too. We're blessed to have such a diverse uh, scene here in Houston. Secret Kitchen Special Sauce, look at that. Oh my goodness. The butter, the garlic. The seasonings, mm. it's good. <laughs> Hell yeah, I just want to drink that. <laughs> Your parents come around in, into the restaurant? They do. Asian people, you know, it's all about family style. They take up the whole table, order a lot of different things. Very family oriented way of eating. Yeah. So this is the, the Gulf Oysters. The Gulf Oysters. Vietnamese oyster. grilled. So we got butter, uh, scallions in there, garlic. The fried shallots, a little lemon juice on top of there. Mmm. Good, nice and buttery. I've literally seen how fresh it is. The guy, the guy just <laughs> came in. You just got your delivery in. Yeah. Straight onto the grill, man. A lot of Vietnamese people moved from Vietnam to the Gulf Coast. Fishing is what they knew how to do. And it's just been what they've been doing since, you know? So that's kind of like how Vietnamese people got into the whole, you know, the Asian Cajun thing. Asians are all about eating the freshest. If you ever toured through Vietnam, everything is still, you know, be before right you there. eat something, yeah. it's right there. There's crab, there's shrimp. There might be a chicken that's still walking around and they'll dispatch it right there in front of you. They'll bring it to your table. Hey, you like this chicken? Yes, I, I want that chicken. When people think about Texas, people think about brisket and doing all of that, but yeah. people don't realize that it's right there on the Gulf. It's a yeah. port city. So not only do we get the freshest seafood from the Gulf Coast, but because it's a port city, we get ingredients from anywhere, from South mm -hmm. America, from Asia, from Europe, you know. Mm. You see all kinds of produce and fish that some of the people haven't seen since they left Vietnam. You see uh, the grocery aisle. Houston has the second largest Asian community in the United States outside of Orange County. You have a huge Indian, uh, Pakistani community, a huge Middle Eastern community. It, it's made Houston grow into such a multi-dimensional food scene that it is today. Oh man, this is so good. Bro. Yo, this is medium spicy. Let's try Craig. Yeah, uh, you're a brain man. Even I don't order the Craig Craig. <laughs> I'm doing it for the gram, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Our highest level, the suicide, which has a ton of cayenne, but then we had to go a, a level above that and add a ton of habanero. So good luck, bro. <laughs> hey, <laughs> 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 we just gotta keep on eating. <laughs> just gotta keep on eating. Forget about the pain. It's, it's usually even spicier than this. They knew you were a rookie, so maybe oh, they, uh, come on. They, they knew, knew I was a wuss, bro. Yeah. Now it's getting to me now. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Who knew you'd find a spot like this in the middle of Houston? It has delicious food, it has crazy ingredients, but no, no cowboys in Houston. Is there cowboys in Houston? Here in Hawaii, we get to cook Korean, Portuguese, Japanese, Puerto Rican, Filipino, Hawaiian, and it's still one cuisine.